22, I believe. 22 people? Yep. Cool. All right, man. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Boomer. I'll see you later. All right. See you, man. Bye. Hey, everybody. We're supposed to have uh, 22 people, and we've got eight right now. So we'll just kind of hang out for a minute. Um, somebody uh, give me a heads up if you can hear me and see me just to confirm that I'm not talking to myself here. Uh, you can put something in the chat. Cool. All right. See it. Sweet. All right. Well, um, like I said, we'll, we'll kind of sit tight for a couple minutes. I'll just kind of ramble for a few minutes here and do a little intro. So uh, first disclaimer is I've never taught this class before. Uh, so this will be fun. Uh, I, I teach up, I teach about eight different topics and those topics I've been teaching for better part of five or six years now, mostly through AB tech and other community college networks. And so for those, whenever they pop up, I can just, like 10 minutes before get some windows pulled up and be ready to go. This one, I actually had to do a little bit of preparation. Uh, so hopefully that, hopefully y'all don't notice too much of a uh, speed bump because of that. Um, I do know Divi super well, but as far as teaching it, uh, we'll see how this goes. So first time. So feel free to give me feedback during or after uh, based on how it goes. Uh, this is, uh, Sherry, this is being recorded and it's going to the cloud. And I think at this point, Dwayne, um, after the sessions end, he goes ahead and sends out a an email to either everybody that signed up or everybody that attended, because sometimes there's a big difference there. Um, uh, so we're going to use the the chat feature. So most of you are probably pretty familiar with Zoom at this point, but there's a, a little chat button. So if at any point you've got a question, go ahead and just put it into the chat. I will do my best to not get too distracted with the questions, uh, but I will also try to get to them as I can. Um, typically, I, I try to answer them around the time that you put the question in there because the screen's already pulled up at, at what we're talking about or the timing is appropriate based on when that question came in. Um, and so the other thing I guess that I'll say is that because this class today is specifically about Divi, I'm going to assume that everybody either already has a WordPress website or is building a WordPress website um, because Divi is a WordPress theme specifically, uh, that you probably know a little bit about Divi, at least the fact that Divi is a WordPress theme. It's a kind of a drag and drop theme. Uh, hopefully most of you are on the earlier side of your learning curve, specifically with Divi. You'll get more out of it compared to some that might have um, already have a Divi site where you're like re really needing some specific, you know, like CSS knowledge. I'm not going to give you any of that today. So sorry. I will dig into to Divi pretty significantly, um, but there's a lot there, just like with WordPress. If any of you guys have taken a WordPress class from me, uh, you know, there's only so much we can cover in two hours. And so I do have to spend the first maybe um, 10 to 10 minutes. I'll try to do it quickly and I'll try to, I'll try to narrate as I do it, but I'm going to build a super fast website uh, because we need to set the stage for us to then activate Divi for us to then learn about Divi. So, um, and I guess with that, I'm going to go ahead and start screen sharing and we'll get this actually going. So um, let me juggle my screens here. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys are seeing my screen. You should see um, the Elegant Themes website. Cool, thanks for the heads up. So as always, I'll give my normal disclaimers as we dig into this. I will do my best to finish all of my sentences. I will do my best to stay on track and be linear with the delivery of all this content. Sometimes that's tough. The internet's not linear, sorry. Um, if you have questions that are kind of parallel to what we're talking about, go ahead and ask them. I might acknowledge the question and be like, not the right time. I don't have time to deal with that. Or, um, you know, shoot me an email afterwards and I'll answer that question specifically. Um, 
my email is super easy. It is boomer. That is B-O-O-M-E-R at bigboomdesign.com. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat. So if you do have any questions, shoot me a message. Um, I make no guarantees on the response time. As some of you know, it takes me a while to get back to stuff, uh, but I will do my best. The other thing that I'll mention is that if um, at the end of this, if anybody wants their own uh, dev site or sandbox or um, staging site, essentially, like a, a fresh WordPress install with Divi installed on it for you to go in and play around with, uh, let me know. Shoot me an email and I'll get a site set up for you. It is not going to be on a server that you can go live with, but it will be um, a WordPress site with Divi that you can play around with. And then if you decide that you really like it or that if you've built something that you want to hang on to, um, you can always export both the entire website or you can export just the pieces of Divi. Um, I'm going to do my best to try to touch, touch that, uh, that process there as far as the ability to export and import across Divi sites, which is, which is a really cool thing, especially for anybody that has more than one website that they might be working with. All right, so we'll go ahead and start by talking a little bit about Elegant Themes and um, Elegant Themes is the company that makes the theme called Divi. And so I've been working with Elegant Themes for probably seven or eight years, longer than Divi has been around. So Elegant Themes does have a whole bunch of other themes, but these days I don't even know how to go find those other themes. Um, they do have, I want to say like 80 or 90 specific themes. Um, but once Divi came out, it stole the show um, for a lot of people. And so all of their focus, Elegant Themes focus, was dumped into Divi because they really did build something that changed web design, changed WordPress specifically. Uh, and so I, I was an early adopter and have hung in there uh, for a long time. Uh, these days, we have probably, we being Big Boom Design and our team, we've probably built 160, maybe more than that, at least 150 uh, Divi specific WordPress websites. They all look very different. Uh, and so that's one of the cool things about Divi is that you can uh, use that one kind of common toolbox or framework, and then you can customize it to look very different. So again, if you have multiple sites that you envision building, you can learn this one interface and then it can, uh, you know, you can, you can push it in any different direction. Uh, one of the things that is a little unusual about this class, normally I teach on uh, platforms or tools that are, all, that are completely free. So WordPress is free, Google Analytics is free, uh, things like that. This is the exception to that. Divi is not free. Uh, Divi has a yearly cost of 89 bucks or a, a lifetime cost of 249. Um, years and years ago, I paid the 249. I've been using it on hundred, hundreds of sites uh, for years and years and years and I've never had to pay them any more money. But this is $89 per year to get all of the updates and everything. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, the question from Cherry is, can give some examples of sites that, we, that we've built using Divi. Um, our website, bigboomdesign.com, is a good one to look at. Uh, you can go look at either the Moog Foundation um, or the Moog Xenum. Those are good looking ones. Uh, Livingstone Construction, Ideology. Um, I Actually, go to look at any website that's in our client list, and it's probably built on Divi. Um, all of the, probably the 15 to 20 that are on there. Um, are using are using Divi. All right, so you got to purchase the theme again. If you want me to set up a site, I can do that for you, and then you'll get access to it. But you won't get the ongoing stuff. So if you are going to use Divi for your site, give them the eighty nine bucks. That gives you a lot of stuff. It gives you uh, access to Divi. There's also another theme called Extra uh, that is that I've used on some blog themes. Um, Bloom I think is like a newsletter sign up or Monarch has a newsletter, sign up one or the other. And then uh, I think Bloom is newsletter and Monarch has to do with social media. So those are kind of their four main products these days. And then uh, the website packs. This is a really cool thing that we're gonna dig into and, and look quite a bit at. Um, Divi comes with all these pre-made layouts. And I'm gonna show you how to manually build out a Divi site, but then we're very quickly gonna pivot away and we're gonna load a couple different home pages from different layout packs. And then we're going to lock in on one of those. And then we're going to kind of build an entire site with one layout pack. Um, you get updates, obviously, that comes with the, the yearly fee. Um, updates make things faster, more secure. They fix bugs, a lot of stuff. 
And then the premium support is a really big one, uh, especially for me running a company where we build sites for people to, to build upon a platform like WordPress and or Divi. Um, it's, it's imperative to have access to support, a support system, hopefully from the company that builds it and the developers who actually like wrote the code, but then also the Divi support system and the elegant themes uh, kind of knowledge base, I could say, they've done it better than most, really almost any theme company that I've ever seen do it. And I've worked with a lot of them. So there's the knowledge base, which is contributed to by users of Divi, like myself and my team and everybody across the world. But then there's also like this premium support where you can submit a ticket and they will help answer your question or work through an issue. Uh, and that is very, very valuable if you're trying to use this, use Divi to, to build out a professional website. Uh, Risk-free guarantee, 30 day money back. Uh, it's, it's not that costly when you really think about it, you know, really, for if you're just paying for hosting at some hosting company, a domain name and a quality theme like this, you can have an entire website up and running for like 150 to $180 a year. Uh, and hopefully with what I'm going to show you in the next two hours, you'll be able to see that uh, you don't have to write any code. You don't even really have to know a ton about web design. They make it stupid simple to spin up a site you have to then load it full of your own content. And that's really the hardest thing, both with uh, being a newbie in web design, as well as if you've been doing this for year, years and years and years, uh, is content. Content is way harder than building websites. So I'll just say that. All right, so um, you gotta go through and you gotta sign up. Uh, I've got a little punch list that I'm trying to use to kind of keep myself logically going in order of these different steps. So I don't want to dig too deep into the server and hosting conversation. Uh, it would kind of take too much time away from what everybody wants to learn about, which is Divi. Um, but you do have to get WordPress set up. If you haven't, if you don't know how to do that, take a, take one of my WordPress classes or just go to a hosting company and they'll get you set up with WordPress. Um, I'm going to jump now over to this site. And so this is a uh, literally a right out of the box, WordPress website. It is sitting on one of our servers that we manage. And um, I, I set this up literally like 20 minutes ago, right before starting this class. And so there's nothing that has been done to this whatsoever. Nothing. Um, and this is what a WordPress site comes, comes as right out of the box. And so we're going to go ahead and start blasting through this process so we can kind of get into the good stuff here. Again, I'm also going to uh, not I'm not going to talk too much about how to navigate around WordPress. My hope is that a lot of you have at least a basic understanding of that. So if I do click on something or if I move too quickly and I lose you, feel free to ask a question. Uh, but if it's like a super duper basic like WordPress navigation thing, um, just kind of hang in there and just ignore it and then I can answer it later. But so I'm going to go ahead and jump to the admin side. I'm going to click on uh, WordPress site up at the top. I'm going to go ahead and close this first uh, tab that I had with the Divi theme. Oh, actually, I'll leave that open for a second. Uh, so the first thing, once you've signed up with Elegant Themes, you've given them your $89 or the $250, whatever level you signed up for, they'll give you a, a download. They'll give you a zip file. And you basically come in here to the Appearance section, and then you click Add New at the top. These are some uh, kind of the built-in WordPress themes that are already going to be there. When you click add new, it's going to take you to the theme browser. This is again, just built into WordPress and um, this will let you browse all the standard themes. We're going to go and upload a theme. I'm going to choose the file. I'll go to my downloads folder. I'll grab Divi. Uh, it's a zip file. You don't need to extract the zip file. In fact, it, it won't work if you try to do that. You have to upload the zip file. This might take a second here. Um, the other thing I'll mention while this is happening is that my internet uh, for a while there for a couple of weeks was really spotty. Uh, some of that was weather, but I think I also figured out some stuff. So if my internet clips out at any point, it's probably only going to last about 10 to 12 seconds. So just hang with me. Uh, but I haven't had any outages, uh, fingers crossed, in about two days, which is actually a huge time frame considering how often it was happening before. Uh, so since we're sitting here waiting, okay. One of the most important things with Divi, be patient. Especially if your internet's not super duper fast. Uh, as you saw, I mean, that was a good 30 to 40 seconds there just to upload the theme. It's, it's a heavy theme in a the sense that there's a lot going on. It can do a lot, but with that comes, you know, some lag time. 
So we uploaded the theme, the theme got installed successfully, that's great, and now we can click activate. All right, so we're over, we're back onto the theme screen here, and we, we can see that we've got this big purple uh, D, we've got this, uh, we've got Divi active. And so at this point, the first thing that we really need to do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of validate that I own a copy of Divi, and that's gonna let us do some stuff down the road. So I'm gonna go over and just click right on Divi. Um, and I'm gonna go to this updates tab, and I'm gonna paste in I've got a uh, my username and then the API key that shows up when you um, when you purchase Divi they're going to give you like a username and an API key you saw a little green check that basically is going to sync your site with their servers and basically validate that you have a legit copy and that you are allowed to get updates as they happen so that's the first thing that we need to do um, and at this point, I'm going to go, let me make sure this, I think I click save, but let's do that again. Uh, I'm just now going to click back on the name of the site. And now, uh, you know, before we had that, that hello world in the center and it had kind of that tan color. So now we've got basically the exact same site, but it's Divi. We see that, that logo up at the top. And there's a few things now that we need to do that is just kind of like setting the stage for all the fun stuff that we're going to do here in a minute. And so um, I will point out before I move on from this is that when you're back over at Elegant Themes, if you go to your account and account details, this is the screen where you can get like your API key, you can change your, your billing and your membership and your info and stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna close that window now. Okay, so what we're getting ready to do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do it and then I'm gonna tell you what I told you. Um, cause again, this is like just setting the stage. So we're going to go in and I'm going to, um, make a bunch of blank pages. I'm going to make a menu and then I'm going to set the home page to be the true home page that WordPress loads. Cause right now, hello world is actually a blog post. And if you've taken any WordPress classes from me, that'll make more sense. Um, WordPress right out of the box is a blog, but you can just flip a switch and make it a, a a, um, a website instead of a blog or really both. All right, so let's go do that. So I'm gonna to jump to the admin side. And again, I'm gonna do this kind of quickly to get into the actual guts of this presentation. I'm gonna now go to pages. I'm gonna trash the sample page. I'm going to, I'm gonna hold down the control key and click add new. And that's gonna open up a new tab it does have this little intro. Um, this is not specific to Divi. This is specific to the Gutenberg block editor. Um, I'm going to skip past talking about Gutenberg for the moment because we're talking about Divi primarily and Divi replaces the Gutenberg block editor. Um, it also replaces, if you have an old school site, it replaces the WYSIWYG. So Divi is the theme, but essentially what it's doing is it's giving you an entirely new website building process and experience. And so the Gutenberg system, which is what this is trying to walk me through, um, is now the kind of the built-in core WordPress editor, um, but that's if you're not using Divi. And we are gonna use Divi. So I'm just gonna click this X. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna just put in welcome and then I'm gonna click publish. I'm also going to, uh, there's a double step when you publish pages with a brand new WordPress site. It's this double check your settings page. Uh, it's called the pre-published checks. I'm going to uncheck this for the speed of getting these pages created. So I'll now click publish. I'm going to click on the uh, WordPress icon at the top left. I'm going to go back to the pages screen and I'm going to do this a bunch of times now. I'm going to click add new, click add new, and I'm going to do this a bunch of times. And there we go. And now I'm going to go build a bunch of bl blank pages about us, publish, services, publish, gallery, contact, publish, let's do a blog page, 
Uh, and then I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to go back to this very first one. Again, hold down control, click add new. And this one I'm just going to call, it's going to be a landing. And um, I'll, I'll explain more about this in, in a little bit, but once we get into some of the layouts, there's going to be different pages for different, uh, different layouts for different types of pages. There's home pages and contact pages and blog pages. Um, all of these different layout packs, they come with what's called a home page. And then they also have a landing page, which is basically just like a much bigger version of the home page that has a lot of different sections kind of all compiled onto it. Okay, so I think at this point, if I come back here and just click refresh, I should get all of those pages. That's good. We've got those in there. All right, at this point, I'm going to go through and just basically close all of these pages out. All right, now we're back here. Um, this next thing that I want to do is, uh, so we made a bunch of pages. I'm going to go and I'm going to set the, uh, the home page of WordPress to be the actual welcome page. So I'm going to go to settings, uh, reading, and then here I can check this box that says, um, your home page should display not the latest posts, but a static page. And then in this home page drop down here, I'm going to say, well, it should be the welcome page. And then here I could go down and check um, blog. Normally we would do this. And what this option here is going to say is the post page. In other words, whenever you create a blog post, those blog posts should land on the post page. And so typically we would do that. We're not actually going to do that in this case. And I'll, I'll, I'll revisit this once we get to the actual blog page and I'll explain why we don't need to. But for right now, I'm just going to set the, um, the welcome page to be welcome. And I'm going to go ahead and click save changes. All right, so now uh, if I click on the top uh, title that's going to take me to the front of the site, it should take me to a blank welcome page. Um, I now, the next thing I'm going to deal with is the fact that the menu is all not what I want it to be. So again, this is kind of the last like, little bit of housekeeping we have to do. I'm going to go over straight to the menus page. All right, here I need to, I need to create a menu. I just create a blank menu. I click create menu. Um, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say select all. Actually, I'm going to click view all and then, um, yep, because I want to make sure I get that welcome page. And so now I'm going to basically just add all those items over into the menu. I can arrange these however I want. So typically contact us at the, the bottom. Blog is right before it. Welcome about services gallery. Landing is kind of a weird one. So I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to put it under, uh, under that. All right. I'm going to, uh, last thing here is I'm going to set this menu that I just made to be the primary menu and I'm going to click save. And then now I'm going to go back to the front of the website and we should have the blank welcome page and our menu in place with a landing as a sub item. That's probably the fastest that I've ever done that entire process. Hopefully you hung in there. It, it doesn't really matter if you didn't because all we got to is just like a standard blank WordPress site with a bunch of pages we can click on. Uh, and this is recorded so you can go back and watch it. Um, how did you get to name the pages? Uh, when you just make a new page, it's just got like page title or I forget what the actual wording is, but you just click right in there um, and it's going to just give you a, the title that you can put into the system. So now if I click through, uh, it's going to go to these different pages and notice it's going to change up here in the address bar, but it's not actually doing anything. Every single page that we have here is blank. And that's okay, because that's what we're getting ready to, to work on. So let me uh, make sure we got, we, we, we bought Divi, we got it uploaded and activated, we added the API key, we did the basic site, site structure and a menu. Um, Yep, that's the important stuff right there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on enable the visual builder. So notice at the top, we've got this big black bar. Uh, that means that we are logged in to the website and that will stay with us both on the front and the back side. Um, yes, Sherry, you can get rid of the Divi logo. We'll do that as, a, as one of the main parts of this. All right, uh, so I'm going to click Enable the Visual Builder, and we're going to do some fun stuff before we go kind of do the tedious stuff. Because um, I want everybody, hopefully this will help retain uh, everybody that might, after a little bit, if I don't get to this stuff, you're like, ah, I'm bored, or 
why is the theme so great? I don't understand. I'm going to go leave and watch a YouTube video that does it quicker than two hours. Uh, so I'm going to try to get kind of quickly into why it's so cool and then we'll backtrack a little bit. So I turn on the visual builder and now we have this thing that says, welcome to the Divi builder. Uh, and that guy in the video, that's the founder, his name is Nick Roach. He has this little kind of intro thing. Uh, we could take the tour and he'll walk us through all these different things. I'm going to do that. Probably not as well as he would, but he built the thing. So uh, you get me instead. So, so I'm going to click start building. And what this is going to do is it's going to take us into this screen that has these three different options. We can either start by uh, building from scratch. We can choose a pre-made layout or we can clone an existing page. This one on the right doesn't make any sense at the moment because we have a bunch of blank pages. We have nothing to clone. Uh, the one on the left is the training wheels and it's, you know, literally from scratch and you get a blank slate and you can go through and start adding your own little modules and sections and rows. Um, we're going to jump to the middle section first because this is more interesting and hopefully we'll give you a glimpse at how cool Divi can be uh, and how quickly you can build out a website. All right, so I'm going to click on the center one, the purple one. And so now we come into this section and this is the, these are the pre-made layouts. This is one of the coolest things about Divi. Um, there are other drag and drop page builder WordPress themes out there. Um, there's Elementor is one of them. Beaver Builder is another one. Oxygen is another one. Um, they all are, you know, they have their pros and cons. Same with Divi. Um, but for me, Divi's the best and has won out. And I think these days it's probably the number one, not just page builder theme, it's probably the number one theme used in WordPress these days. Um, I, don't quote me on that, but it probably is. So there's 182 different layout packs. They're organized into these different columns over here. They're, sorry, these different categories over here. And so depending on the type of site that you're wanting to build, you can come over here and you can filter these down because it can get a little overwhelming. Like if we just start scrolling, you're like, well, I don't know which one is good. So if you go back to the top and say, well, you know, I'm trying to do a online store, start with that. And then that'll filter down and then you've got 21 to look through. Um, or let's say you're doing, you know, an online store for technology, you can double up on those. So you can pull in multiple categories and pick and choose between them. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to uncheck these and let's do, let's do something boring for the moment. Let's do a business category and then we'll go from there. So um, again, just with the, the layout browser, I want to show you a little bit and then we're going to pick one. And uh, this is the part that I haven't rehearsed at all. So we're just going to pick a random theme that I've never used or a random layout that I've never used. And we'll just run with it. And if it sucks, then we'll backtrack and we'll do a different one. Um, all right. If one thing I want to point out is that if you hover over one of these layouts, it will slowly scroll through the landing page, which is part of that layout. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one. It's the copywriter layout. I'll go ahead and click it. All right, so we've got a little bit of info. I've tell you too, I've never once read the descriptions for these layouts. I go just visually based on what I'm seeing. Um, and you can, over here, I'm rolling the mouse button right now so I can kind of roll through and get an idea of what this specific page looks like. And you can see over here on the right, we've got, you know, we've got these nine different page layouts and each page layout is gonna have unique sections or modules as they're called in this. And they're all, all nine of these are cohesive. They all fit together. They're all styled the same. And so that's one of the first goals that you need to, um, that you need to identify is like, which layout do you want to go with? So um, it's a good idea to just start by maybe loading the landing page. And I'm going to go ahead and click uh, use this layout. Again, this is where you got to be a little bit patient with it and it's, I promise it's not going to take as long as it looks like it's going to take right now that loading bar is going to jump up in a second and then it'll jump up like to a hundred percent. So the, from 1% up, it takes forever. There you go. And then it should crush through it quickly. And so what it's doing is it is, uh, it's, it's pulling down all the images, it's loading all those different modules and it's getting it all set up onto the page. Yeah. So, um, there's a question, can you borrow other pre layout pages in different designs? to the one you're using. Yes, so you can mix and match. And that's the really cool thing. You can, there's 180 some odd layouts. You might like the footer from one 
and you might like the header from another and you might like all the body parts from another one and that's totally up to you and that's cool that all of that stuff is loaded right into divi and that's probably one of the reasons if you hear criticism about divi people will say well there's there's too much and it's like well yeah there's a lot going on and there's a lot to choose from but that's also kind of the benefit as well. And you can, it's up to you to mix and match and see, see how you want to work with it and how you want to navigate that. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff in there, but you don't have to use all of it, you know? So, okay, so I loaded the layout. And so I am in what's called uh, the visual builder, okay? And I say that specifically because there's a way that you can interact with Divi and these layouts on the backside of the website that is more of like the, the admin side but you don't get to visually see stuff and manipulate it. So I want to, I want to double check my um, my list to make sure I'm not skipping anything here. Yep, so we manually made the pages and all right. So now the main thing that I want to talk about is kind of the the hierarchy or the nesting of all of the different uh, the sections, the rows, and the modules. Okay, so if I hover over this main image, I get a big blue outline. And then at the top left, I have these different controls here. This is the blue sections, they're called sections, okay? Compared to green, which are rows, compared to gray, which are modules, okay? So we've got sections, rows, and modules, and they go kind of in that order. The sections are the big giant sections. <laughs> the rows let you define individual rows inside of one of those sections and rows can be uh, set up into columns as you see right there that that little uh, column structure button. Uh, and then the modules are where most of the content lives. And I say that kind of specifically because content, pictures, text, video, things like that. But one of the things that can be a little tricky with Divi early on is not knowing how to get to a certain image or get to a certain section uh, um, setting with inside of a certain area. So for instance, right now, you know, I've got this big giant image of this woman with this brick wall in the coffee shop or something like that. I know based on like where I just see the blue perimeter, that's probably, and I say probably because I've never worked with this layout, that's probably a background image attached to the section. It's not attached to the row because it bleeds out past that area. And it's, pro it's almost definitely not a background for the module specifically, which is probably just the text. Okay, so before I dig into this, I just wanna scroll through and we're gonna look at what we've got going on here on this page. So um, again, for the moment, kind of ignore this top section. It's still really generic. We've got the Divi logo. We've got our menu with this kind of standard blue. We've got that little um, divider line, which is the standard blue for Divi. And I'm just going to scroll through. This has kind of a nice little cut line on that. Um, notice we've got some like little handle handlebars here. So you can actually click and drag and, and resize and move things around visually. Here we've got next, we have a, another section, this next blue section down. There's our row and there's one module, two modules, and those are both sitting inside of See if I can hover and get that. There we go. So that row has two different text modules sitting inside of it, that one and that one. If we come down here, um, this is the next row, but we're still up in the same section. Notice I hover over it and I can see that blue line and that blue, this blue section encompasses this text module, this text module, as well as all six of these and that button. Um, I can come in here and I can basically just click anywhere and I can just start typing. So you can actually just interact directly with this visually and start changing out your content. Now, one thing I do, well, I'm gonna hold off. I told myself I wasn't gonna dig too deep in. I wanna keep scrolling through. Uh, we got a button there. Now we get to the bottom of this section. Uh, here's a, the next section down. This is like a number counter, uh, number counter. Those, once we save this page and we go and we preview the page, once you scroll down to this spot, it's going to like initiate the counter to happen, which is kind of a neat feature. Next section down here, we've got another text block. And then over here, we've got what to me looks like 
I can't tell if this is multiple column. Yeah, it is. So right there, you can see there we've got a, looks like a three column layout here. And so we've got text on the left, which has text, text, and a button. We've got this graphic in the center. And then it looks like we have some, some kind of empty, um, we have an empty column over on the right, an empty module. If we come on down, we've got the next one here. Again, we've got kind of this interesting cut line. That's probably attached to that one right there because it's inside of that blue box. Same thing here, but a reversal of what we saw up above. So a three column, now we've got the text on the right. And again, I'm gonna try to burn through these a little bit quicker. Next one down here, we've got a big giant background image with a kind of an, an orange, uh, slightly uh, transparent overlay here. And so on and so on. This one is a slider. We can see we've got that little slider, uh, little slider arrow controls that show up. Uh, down here, we've got a blog section. I know that just because that's that hello world post that got pulled in. And it also says blog right there. And then down here, we've got our final section at the bottom, which is a little contact form. Uh, and it looks like this is maybe a two. Yep, we've got a two column. That is one. That is one row right there. And then down here, we've got a, another row with, a, with two columns added into it. Okay, so at this point, what I wanna do is I just wanna save this page. And I'm gonna exit the visual builder. And now I'm looking at the front of the website, essentially, without the uh, visual builder turned on. And so now I'm viewing this page and the site kind of as, um, as if I was a user on the website. Um, question from Sherry, are there specific section types? Yes, there are. And we'll get into that in just a second. There are um, specific section, row, and module types. And, and but luckily, you interact with all of them the same way. Uh, but that is one of the tricky things over time is understanding when to use certain types of, of um, sections, rows, and modules. So as I scroll down, I'm just going to kind of share some of these little hover states. There was a nice little fade in there. These icons fade in. There's that little number counter that I talked about. Uh, subtle animations. These are all real cool. You know, for me, I was doing flash web design in like high school and in college because that was the cool thing to do was work with Adobe Flash. We lost that, that movement within websites and we didn't have it for like a decade. And we finally have it back. And I'm really excited about that. And it's just subtle. It's little subtle HTML5 movements. Uh, a little fade in on the button and a little hover state there. Same thing there. Here's our little, um, in this case, like a little testimonial slider. These could have images or they could just be text. We've got little hover states on those uh, logos. A little fade in on the blog section, and then we've got our contact down here at the bottom. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go back and um, I want to talk a little bit about, let me turn the visual builder back on. And I want to just dig in real quickly into one of these specific modules. So we're going to go like all the way in. That was a real like high level view. Now we're going to zoom all the way into the smallest level, which is inside of a module. Um, and then what I want to do is I'm going to spin up and load the other layouts for the other pages. Because if, if you get nothing else or if somebody has to leave like at the one hour mark, I can literally show you how to build an entire decent looking website in like under an hour. Um, and, and that's kind of cool. You'll obviously then have to go change out content and pictures and all that kind of stuff. But um, I want to do that. And then we'll, we're going to keep doing this like high level perspective, zoom down in and we'll kind of bounce back and forth. Uh, and so Linda had a question, how can, how and um, can and how can I remove pictures and add pictures? And we're definitely going to, we'll look at that. So the content is the hard part. Um, and I showed you that you can click in and actually just type or change right there. One of the things that you should probably get in the habit of doing though, and I'm going to click outside of this module and I'm going to hover back over it, is if you're not active, if it's not active like inside of the module, you'll get that little pop-up box like I had there. And if you click on the gear, that's how you go into the settings. And that's, in this case, I'm hovering over the module settings. There we've got the same, we've got the 
the row settings, and then here we've got the section settings. So I'm going to go into the module. And I want to talk about just kind of how to interact with this little pop up window that that shows up constantly. Uh, because depending on the size of the screen that you have, depending on if you have multiple screens or not, um, depending on if you're trying to do this on a tablet, which I wouldn't really advise, but you can, uh, you can interact with this and you can, you can pin it, you can size it, you can move it around however you want. So I like to get this to about, you know, about half the screen, but I also like to be able to um, see what's going on behind it. And so you can use that little corner arrow. Uh, you have to hover it to get it to show up. And then you can also, you can pin, you can snap it to the left, or you can make it float again. And there's some options as far as um, how, you, how you manipulate this. So I'm gonna go back to that and let's go ahead and turn that back on to how it was. And let me get that back to like right there. Okay, um, it's a good idea to get in the habit of always kind of looking at the very top to understand what type of module you're interacting with. Um, as we ran through and we kind of scanned over this home page, this landing page, we, we, we looked at like 15 different modules there. There was the testimonial slider, there was image modules, there's buttons, there's the blog section. And we're going to go look at all those in a, in a second, not all of them, but, um, but we're going to look at the module browser and I'll show you that there's a lot of different module types that you need to uh, at least be aware of. Whether or not you use them all is up to you. So this is the text section. This is probably the most common module that you, you'll use. You, um, you can put images inside of these text modules, but a lot of times like this big background image, that's not inserted inside of a module. It's kind of on a bigger level and it's kind of at the, the higher up level. In this case, it's the background on the section. All right, so it's a text module. We've got our homepage text. Just like before, when I click directly on it, we can edit content here and it'll show up back here behind it. One of the reasons why I like doing this is because you've got all of your settings here. Whereas if you just click directly on the text, all you can really do is change the text. You don't get nearly the depth of, um, of, of settings or sections or, or things that you can manipulate within this. And so I wanna spend just a, a minute kind of looking through these, these different accordions. And then we're also very briefly gonna look at these different uh, tabs up top. So uh, again, we've got the text. You can man manipulate that right here. You've got all your standard, this is called the WYSIWYG. Um, this is what you've probably interacted with before if you've ever done any websites building at all. If not, this is pretty much identical to what you'd see in like Microsoft Word. And so the WYSIWYG is kind of nested inside of the text module. There's that text right there. Uh, if I click on link, module link. So I can link the entire module. So if you click anywhere on that text, it will link out to some website. And so this literally is wanting me to put in, you know, like some website there. And then the entire area or the entire div is the term um, would link out to that particular site. And then you can choose open in the same window or open in a new tab, just like if you're making a link in any uh, text. And then we've got a background section here. This is where, you know, we can come in and start putting, putting things in place here. Um, this is very quickly going to become very hideous. <laughs> um, but so just to give you an idea, you can go through and you can set backgrounds or images at any level, at the module level, at the row level, or at the section level. Uh, and then you can always trash that. I just hovered over it and clicked on that. Um, again, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this text module than the others because it's the most common and a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in here, they show up in all of the other um, areas. They show up in module settings, row settings, and section settings. So background is one of those consistent things. Uh, the second one here is a gradient where I could come in here and I could say, I want to add a gradient. And a gradient is uh, a fade between two colors. And so I could come in here and kind of move this around and, and decide how hideous to make this. All right. If I click back on it now, again, I can trash it. Uh, this one down here is, is to pull in an, an actual image. I don't know if we have any, uh, yeah, it loaded some stuff. We'll go ahead and just throw that image on it. Again, just kind of showing that you can set that, uh, the, the background image on that particular module. And then lastly on here, we've got a video. 
I would advise you to probably never use video backgrounds on a module level. That was the tough one. Um, video backgrounds are really cool. They work really well. If you want to go see one, uh, if you Google the, if you Google Remax Tryon, North Carolina, uh, we did that website on Divi and it's got like a real big giant hero video clip. It's like five or six different clips. If you do go look at that website, don't get totally lost uh, and, and miss the next couple minutes uh, or just write it down and come back to it later. Okay. Minimizing the background. Um, down here, the last thing is admin label. You know, this is me just being a little, you know, OCD person when it comes to web design, but um, get in the habit of naming your admin, get, get in the habit of naming your different modules. Um, if you're using the front end builder, it's not a big deal. You can just see what it is. But as we'll see in a little bit, when you go to the backside, if you do work with the, the, um, the Divi builder on the backside of the site, it's just going to say like text box, text box, image box, slider. And unless you know intimately what those are, you're not going to know. So it's a good idea to just give it a title. And in this case, it's already uh, titled because we loaded from this pre, uh, pre built layout. Uh, please review picture image size recommendations for the website. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it crazy quick. And it's going to be brief, briefer, more brief than it normally is. A thousand by a thousand pixels is about the biggest image that you'll ever need. The one exception to that might be a big background image like this. This is maybe 1400 by 1400 pixels, uh, but 1400, a thousand, like right in that range is about the biggest you'll ever need. Uh, and then the size of the image under a hundred kilobytes, ideally. Those are your two, your two big um, parameters that I would put in there. A uh, question from Sherry, does it help SEO to give it a title? Yes, uh, the, there's a concept called keyword density. And what that concept is, is that whatever you want your website to show up on Google for, your website needs to be dense with those keywords, keyword density. Any chance that you get to inject or add those keywords, those long tail terms, those phrases, those questions, all the things that people are going to Google that you want to show up for, your website's not going to show up for any of them if those terms and keywords don't exist on the site. So put it in the text, put it in the image names, uh, put it in the headings, put it in the buttons, all of those different places. That's a really good question and we could dig way deeper into that, but for the sake of time, um, there's like so much to cover with Divi that I'm already looking at the clock thinking there's no way I'm covering it all. Um, okay, let's look into buttons because this is kind of the second most used thing. If I click on module settings here, now notice up at the top I have, uh, it says button settings. And button settings are simple. Um, we've got what's the text that shows up on the button. And then where does the button link to? It's super duper simple there. Um, I'm going to go in at this point and I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put in a pound sign and type in the word form. I'm going to do this now because we're right here. I'm not going to talk about this right now. We're going to come back to it. But what I'm doing is I'm creating an anchor or I'm creating the first part of an anchor and an anchor you've all experienced, but might not know that it was called that is when you click on a button or a link and it takes, it anchors you, it takes you down lower on the page. Um, there's, it's a two part process. You have to create the spot that it goes to, and then you have to make something link down to it. So we just did the second part there, the link down to it. Uh, the other thing that I want to stress is always get in the habit of saving on every level. And what I mean by that is there is a green checkbox right here that says save changes. This just saved the changes only on that one button. I made changes to this, not, not really, but I went into that module at least and I could have made changes. I did, I added those three little dots. Um, you also need to save at the bottom right. Save at every level. Whether you're in a section, a row, or a module, you have to save to get back to the main screen, but then you need to save the entire page that you're on because it sucks to forget to do that. And then you leave and you just worked on all these little modules and then you didn't save the entire page and then you lose it. Um, it should pop up with a little pop-up to say, hey, you made changes. Are you sure you want to do this? But don't rely on that. Okay. Uh, 
let's keep on moving down through this. And I want to get into some slightly, not more advanced, but just some of the cool things about Divi. So this is a good section right here. Um, typically on websites, we create what's called a rule of three. And a rule of three is three pieces of content divided into thirds because going back hundreds and hundreds of years, they figured out that people digest content well in thirds. If you go over that or under that, it does, it's not as effective. Don't quote me on that study. I don't know when it happened, but I've been told for years that that's a real thing. So this is a rule of three that's been cloned and, and turned into two. So what they did was they created a, um, uh, they created a set, uh, sorry, they created a section. It's this big blue section. They created a row. And when they did that, they picked it needs to be divided into thirds. You can see here, you've got a lot of different options for how this gets uh, divided out. So what if I want to go to four? I can click on four and it just pushed those three over and it gave us this fourth column here. The next thing I want to show is that you can, there's this little button, it's like a little picture in picture and that is the duplicate module. So I can click duplicate module it's going to put, it's going to clone that module. It's going to put it right below. It's in the same column now. And then I can grab, grab this little uh, move icon. I can drag it and basically just drop it right there. And so we just clone that item. We, we change this to a four column. Again, we just clicked on that right there. Uh, we then cloned a module and then we just moved it over to that one. So we just cloned an individual module, right? I'm going to do that again, clone it did that and I can trash it as well. But you can clone at any level. You can clone at the row level. And they call it duplicate. I guess I keep calling it clone, but it's a duplicate. And so now we just doubled up on that. This is super powerful. Uh, the cool thing about this is that let's say you're doing this rule of three or rule of four or whatever you want to do on your site. You can create one, uh, one block okay, one uh, module or a series of modules, and then you can get it all styled exactly how you want, and then you just clone it, clone it, clone it, drag it, drag it, drag it, change out that content, okay? Uh, if, I, if I do click on, this is one, a new module that we haven't looked at yet, and this is the blurb module. And let me close this and we'll talk about what a blurb is. It's basically, it's a little picture, it's a heading, and it's some text all combined into one module. So rather than try to put in a button module, a, a text module with another text module, if you want all three of those things all together, that's a blurb. Uh, blurbs are great for kind of little calls to action. Here's a heading, here's a little bit more about what it is. Uh, now here's a button to go learn more about that. So we've got our title right there. We've got our content down below, again, very similar to the text module. But then now, in addition, we have this, this image. I'm going to drag this over here to the other side. Uh, now we've got this image and icon. We can say do or don't show the icon. So you can see right there what it just did. We could uh, go through, and there's a bunch of different icons in this little browser. So let's, I haven't had enough coffee today, so we'll do a little coffee cup. And there's different um, you know, dark or light icons based on the background that you might be putting it onto. That's one thing that I don't have any, any time at all to dig into, which is accessibility. It's an important thing, uh, but make sure that you're not putting really, really faint text or icons on a background or on an image where you can't see it. You will actually get penalized by Google for creating a site that is visually hard for people to see, especially hard for people that are visually impaired to see. Uh, but you can see there's a bunch of icons in here to pick and choose from, and these are all um, before anybody even asks a question, all the icons and all the images that exist inside of Divi are free for you to use on these sites. So I change that to a little coffee cup and then I can come down here and I can link the title. And all that's going to do is it's literally just linking that title over to it. Um, but you can also link the entire module. So sometimes we'll try to do that because we do, we do heat map tracking and it's shocking that even if you put a big giant button there, people click like just above it or just outside of it or just somewhere that you don't want them to click. Uh, so if you link the entire module, they're gonna get to it pretty much regardless of where they click within 
within reason. And then again, you can uh, have it open up in a new window if you're sending somebody offsite, uh, or you can keep it in the same area. Likewise, we still, we again have this background, and as you can see, uh, these four options are still here color, gradient, image, or video. And we can set that and see how that works. The other thing that I didn't uh, talk about, I don't think I talked about this before, is the transparency. So, you know, let's say that we were going to put in something just hideous here, but then you can click on uh, transparent and it's going to completely blank that out totally. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can click on this gear at the top once you've selected a, um, a particular color. And there's another transparency here that lets you actually like dial this in. So it's a subtle because I'm using that white. Let me change it. We'll go with that. And now this will be a little bit easier to see. Now when I do that, you get a really clear understanding of that transparency opacity level. Um, and you know this is not looking great, but if we had a big giant image in the background here, uh, we might want to put a little slightly transparent overlay uh, to to let people see that um, to see that text a little bit better. So I'm going to uh, just make that transparent. I'm going to save that change. And to to talk a little bit about that same topic before we move on too far, if I scroll down to this section here, this is a really quality use case for that level of transparency. I'm going to go back up in just a second, but um, you know, there's this bright image that was added in the background, and then there was this super bright orange or reddish color that was added, and then they, they pulled it down to like a 5 to 8 to 10 percent opacity so that you can kind of see that city scene back behind it. Compared to, and we'll look at it when we get down to it, compared to, um, you know, just having that image be super duper bright and not being able to see any text that sits on it. All right, getting down here, uh, the number counter thing, uh, this is kind of a neat one. Again, this is a specific module. It's probably not called the number counter thing. It's called number counter. Look at that. Uh, number counter settings. So here you can put in the, uh, the title. So let me, sorry, let me drag this back to the right. Uh, so it's this one that I clicked on. Uh, consultations, it's, you know, 9,000. Uh, and then under elements, Elements is a very common accordion section that you'll, you'll see show up in a lot of different places. Uh, we'll look at that again in just a minute. And in this case, the, the number counter only has one element that you can turn on or turn off, and it's just a little percentage sign. Um, we are running into an issue where, because we have four columns, that percent sign is going down below. Probably if I bump this da back down, we might get back to where it's next to it. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Yep. So, so it bumped it down because of the space. There's a certain amount of padding that this thing needs with these different columns. And, um, and so if anything runs out of alignment, sometimes you kind of have to adjust either like the font size or drop it down to three columns instead of four. And that'll also uh, help. So that was the elements. Again, we can link it. Again, we can put a background in there. And again, we've got the label. I will at this point jump over to this design tab. We could do it on any one of these setting screens. It gets a little overwhelming really quickly. Uh, there are quite a few here. And my biggest piece of advice here is don't get too bogged down and too deep into this at first, like we're doing right now. Uh, I want to point these things out, but pick a layout, load the different layouts. We're getting ready to do that in just a second. and. Um, and then go back and kind of explore these things. I would also encourage you to try the layouts first because they will teach you a lot about where these different colors and sizes and images and levels and transparencies, it'll teach you about all those things as you go through and mess with it. So even if you pick a layout, you work with it, and then in the end you change the layout, that's fine because all the layouts are managed and dealt with the same way. There's different colors and different sizes and different images, but interacting with them, it's the same regardless. So this is where you can go in. I needed to say that to uh, before I opened up any of these uh, accordions here. So now you can see we've got alignment on the text. We've got the, the dark or light color for the actual the text right there. And this is just the text. This isn't even the main uh, piece right up top. We've got shadows. We've got the title text. And it, it keeps getting deep and deeper as we move through these. Uh, there's the number text, which obviously is, is that 90%. 
and we could go in and change things there. Uh, we can change sizing. Again, I, I will try and encourage everybody. One of the most important things these days with web design is making sure your content that is, is uh, keeping the, con uh, the content similar in the sense that you're not using different sizes, different fonts, different colors, different shapes. Uh, continuity was the word I was struggling to get there. Continuity throughout the entire website is a very important thing. Um, it's extremely important. People might not necessarily like pick it up immediately if they're like, oh, that's, that's this size and that's two pixels larger or two font points higher. Um, but they might, they might get that even if they don't, if, even if they're not like, you know, a, a font junkie um, or a graphic designer or an art director. So just try to set that stage early on and keep things looking the same. And so to do that, like, let's say I wanted to go this route, um, I could, I could now just come over here and clone, 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 and then basically just drag these over. So I changed the color, I changed the, um, the size, and then it's like, okay, now I want all those to be the same. And now you just go through, delete these, and then change the content. So another way to say what I just said, style something first, clone it out a bunch of times, and then work with the content to, to change it. it. It looked better before, I'll admit that, but we're on a roll here. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and save the page. We are right at the one hour mark. We're making good progress here. All right, this one, um, let me confirm. Yep, so that is a rule of three. It's a three column layout. Again, we could uh, drag this over. We could you know, move this stuff around. We've looked at, uh, this is text, text and button right there. So we looked at all of those different modules. This is just an image module. So I forget who it was that asked. I think it was Sherry, possibly about uh, image manipulations here. But uh, so this is an image module and there's very little that you can do inside of an image module. So it's basically like, what's the image? Does it link somewhere? And what's the background, if anything? Okay, so if I go back to the top, uh, just like when we were setting the color and the gradient, if I come in here and I click directly on it, it's going to bring up this image browser section. And here's where I could come in and I could upload an image. So let's go ahead and upload. Let me go. I have on my desktop, I've got a class folder. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm a motorcycle junkie. And uh, so we'll load this little motorcycle image. Cool. Uh, this now does not fit at all with this uh, layout. So we're going to use this time to roll back. And so here, what I've got is um, a, basically an undo button. So I could click undo or redo. And this is just going to jump back and forth between the two. So again, just to recap on that, you click directly on the image. You can come through and you can uh, pick out a new image and it'll swap that out. And then you can always undo that. Yeah, question from Sherry, do you change section images the same way? Yeah, so let's go ahead and that's a good segue into this. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and click save on that one. So let's go down, let's go down to this. So here, so there's, there's nothing going on at this level, but I want to click on it because we haven't yet. So row settings brings us into this thing that it's, it's pointing out the fact that we've got content laid out in a column. In this case, it's only one column compared to, let me close this, go back up, click on settings here. We have three columns here. Okay, so this is a way that you can also get down into the settings specific to one column compared to the other column. There's a lot of layers to this and that gets a little overwhelming. Uh, and you never, you never have to know all of these different levels and layers. You know, we, like I said, we've built hundreds of these sites and I'm, I still find new stuff all the time. So if I go now to the section settings and I click on that one and I go to background, notice what we've got. We've got three things turned on. We've got this background image, which if I click on settings here, it's going to bring me back into this so I could change it and say, I want to use that one. And notice it just changed it to this woman from the header uh, with that brick wall. Uh, I kind of like that city scene. So we'll go back to that. If I click on the gradient, 
I'm going to now see that, and this is subtle, this is real subtle, but this is an interesting way to use a gradient where it's actually a, a slightly transparent gradient. So they've got the color of this orange, which starts at the top, and that's why at the top of this, you really can not really see any of the city scene. And then down here, they have what's probably the same exact color. It's just got a slight layer of transparency to it. That, that's what that 0.85 means right there. You don't really need to know that, but um, and so it's a, it's basically a gradient with one solid color, the same color, but that other color at the bottom is a slightly transparent version of it. Uh, and then right here, we've got the actual like orange, which is the, the color in the background. All right, I'm going to save that one. Yep. And I think that ran through, I think that ran through good bit. Let me pause just for a minute and double check my punch list here. Uh, we did drag and drop. We didn't. We didn't actually drag and drop. We did cloning and and we didn't do saving either. Okay, so let's let's look at this. Um, on the section level, and actually at a lot of these different levels, you can drag items. We did drag a module around, uh, but we can actually move entire sections. So I can grab this section and drag it and let it go, and it now just move this entire section and all the contents inside of it down to the, the section down below. It moved it below the section uh, that it was above. Okay, so I just moved it back up there. Uh, again, we looked at the settings. There's the clone or the duplicate. And then here's a good one, which is save section to library. So for the next minute or two, I wanna talk about saving sections, rows, and modules and kind of building out your library. Okay, so if I click on this, it's a little circle with a downward arrow. What this is doing is it's basically, there's a, a spot, there's the, um, the Divi library. And the library is a collection of anything that you've put in there to use on other pages or in other spaces. So in this one, I'm gonna call this um, full bleed. Full bleed is the concept where it runs all the way to the edge. So full bleed CTA, call to action. Full bleed CTA, uh, X and button. If you're going to start stacking up these, this library, call these things something that makes sense to you. And that make, might make no sense to you, but based on like the terminology that me and my team use, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can use it to kind of define like the first bit of that says something like, um, you know, the, the, something about the settings and then the second part of it is, is like what's actually in there. I did just realize that some of you have been stacking up questions in the Q&A. Give me one second here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and run through these real quickly. Um, and so Catherine, it's Catherine's doing it. Catherine, so I'm gonna answer your first question separately. But uh, did you say where is the best place or module to put a video? Uh, the the background of a section is probably the best place to put a video because you're probably gonna want to put some text and maybe a button or a graphic on top of that. Uh, and so therefore you want like the furthest zoomed out level, which is the section. Um, yep, and I think I, I think I just answered your question on that same as well, on that same one. All right, so getting back into saving something into the library, I gave it a title. Um, one thing you can do is you can you can lock every instance of a section or a row or a module, you can lock them all together. So for instance, this one has a button. And if this is gonna be a call to action that we're gonna use on a lot of different pages, we probably want that button to be the same link in every instance. And so I'm gonna say, make this a global item. And I will, uh, I can make a category if I want, let's make a category called, called global. So again, global means that every instance that I uh, every time I use this module, it's gonna, they're all going to be locked together. And I'll save that to the library. All right. So we did drag and drop, clone or duplicate, and then save to library. At this point, uh, last little bit that I want to talk about, and then we're going to go blast through and make and load up these other pages. Uh, one thing to wrap up the global module, glo the global section conversation, is the fact that now that I've made this a global item, it's turned green. So this bright shade of green 
is means that it is a global item compared to um, you know the green that we saw just before on the rows. Let me like you can see that this is more of like a forest green, whereas down here we've got like a neon green, I guess. And and we can see that that both the section, the row, and the module all have that same green. They are all locked together. You can make just a module global and use it various places. You can make a row or you can make an entire section. Uh, the question from Sherry, where is the library stored? Uh, if you're on the admin side of WordPress at the very bottom left, there's a Divi section and that's where it gets stored. And we'll look at that uh, before the end. All right, so I wanna go ahead, I'm gonna save this page. Last thing I wanna point out is down here at the bottom left. Uh, this, it's, a, it's three little squares, rectangle and a square. If you click on that, it takes us to what's called the wireframe view. This is the equivalent to what I said before about the admin side. And so you can see now that it's a little tough to understand, you know, well, what, what blurb is that? What blurb is that? And how are they different? Well, right now they're not. Um, but if you go in and you put the actual titles of these, there is that hero section title. This is where that admin title will go. You can do the zoom level, which this is kind of nice. It will let you uh, kind of literally like lift up and zoom out a good bit so that you could potentially um, have more of a, it's sometimes easier to work with multiple areas of the page at one time or being able to see multiple areas at one time. And then the other thing down here is, are these three different options that let us see what the website is going to look like on the different devices. So by default, we've been working in the desktop view the whole time. That is going to dump, drop it down to more of a tablet view. We can still scroll through, see how it looks. And then we can drop this down to a phone view. And this is really handy to be able to see this super quick and on the fly. Uh, so it pulled all of those, you know, the rule of three and the rule of four, it stacked them all, stacked all that content. Um, you know, one of the cool things about Divi is that it is so responsive right out of the box. And so responsive is the term for a site responding to the different device. So it's responding to the fact that it's looking at it as a desktop, a tablet, or a, or a phone there. And uh, so Divi is just super duper responsive. All the different layouts are, uh, which is a really, really great thing. And you have to almost like work you have to try to make the thing not responsive. You can, you can go put in like a big pricing table that doesn't collapse very well and you can do certain things that restrict it. But by default, it's, it's super duper responsive. And then uh, last before we jump away is going to be this bottom section. This plus sign is going to let you uh, load items from the library. So Sherry asked a question about, you know, where's the library? The complex answer is it's stored in the database, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, the more, Appropriate answer is you can load things from the library a lot of different ways. Here's one of them where you could load an entire page, you could load a section, you could load a row or a module from that level. Uh, this is gonna do that same thing, save, in this case, save the entire page uh, that we're working on. We could trash the entire page. Uh, this just collapses that bottom row this is going to give us the page settings. So the title, the excerpt, a featured image, some things that you might expect to see kind of if you've, if you've worked with WordPress uh, previously. And then this thing is super handy and I wanted to make sure I brought, I talked about these purple buttons mainly because of this. This is a revision log. This is everything that we've just done. Time stamped, what we did, kind of what we did. And so we can click on any one of these and it's gonna jump back to different moments in time. And then we can, we can restore these different states. And I am not gonna do that at the moment. And then this one is the portability. I mentioned earlier about, you know, it's really cool that Divi makes it uh, portable in the sense that you can export all of these settings and modules and sections, and then you can pull it into another website. So a uh, question from Sherry, if you make a whole page global and put it on a new page, can you change elements on the new page? You can always change items inside of a global module section or row, um, but it's gonna change every instance of it. You, you really wouldn't wanna make an entire page global 
uh, there's kind of a different process to deal with, I think, what you're, what you're talking about there. And so, and hopefully we'll get to that in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this page. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder. I am going to, uh, again, I'm gonna hold down the Control key. I'm gonna click About Us, Services, Gallery, Blog, and Contact. And now I'm gonna go to each one of these and turn the Visual Builder on and hope that my browser doesn't crash. Okay, uh, so now, and, and I just like to get the assembly line process going. Um, and, and you'll see what I mean in just a second here. So I'm gonna click, you know, choose a pre-made layout, choose a pre-made layout, choose a pre-made layout, choose a pre-made layout, choose a pre-made layout. And then now back to the beginning. And so that was the copywriter. Um, so I'm just gonna jump to, I think that was copywriter. Yep, copywriter, and then, it, and then right here, we've got the, um, the about page. So I'll click it, use this layout, I'll go to services, copywriter, uh, and let's see here, we've got services, use the layout. And you can tell I'm just doing the exact same thing, so I'm gonna stop narrating. This is on the gallery page. Now there might not be a gallery page because she's a copywriter, this is a copywriter layout. So for this one, we're gonna replace gallery with something like portfolio page. The blog page, there's blog, use the layout. And finally we have the contact page. Oh, don't crash. Okay. We'll give it just a second here. While, that's, while we're waiting on that to come back to life, we'll just scan through. So here I've got my about me. I'm gonna save it. I'm not even gonna look at these things yet. I just wanna see if they all got loaded. Save, there's the portfolio page. There's the blog page. That came back to life, that's great. Uh, contact page, use this layout. And then um, the other thing that I'm gonna do, so this, we actually loaded the landing page for this one. Um, so I'm gonna go in now and let's go to the landing page. And I'm going to use the visual builder. And, then, and in this case, I'm gonna load the home page. Uh, so we'll mix up there, but it'll be okay. So again, we, we had the landing page as, that, as the one that we've been working with most of the time. But there is also the, it should be, um, homepage right in the center. Use this layout. All right, so just to run back all, all of these, we, we got this one set up. I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder on all of these now that we've saved them all. I need to save the contact page. And let's save that one. Always just make sure, get in the habit of just watching for that little check mark. All right, so now I'm going to just close all these tabs down. Hopefully I didn't just do this way too, hopefully I didn't lose everybody with what I just did. But I basically just went back to each of those pages that I, um, that I did before and just loaded them in there. So I'm actually going to, uh, let me go, before I do this, I'm gonna jump back to that spot that I was at before, settings, reading. I'm gonna show you, you can really easily just change your home page. I'm gonna change it to that landing page. I'll go back to the front. And now we've got what this theme or what this layout designer considers to be the true home page. Um, and a uh, question from Sherry to follow up on her question from before about the global item for an entire page. Uh, she said, I was thinking of creating a template page for sub pages. I am definitely, I have one of these tabs open at the top to show that exact scenario. So this is the home page. Um, again, I want to kind of just, I'm just going to jump through and we're just going to look at all of them just so you can see that, you know, they all have similar images. They all have similar colors, similar buttons. Let's go now to the about. Different number counter thing right there. That's a cool little fade in feature over top. So this is probably a background set on the section. 
This is a text module set on top of that with a white background. I'm not sure exactly how they made that cut line. That might be part of that, uh, that image. Uh, that's another, like those are, that's, that module is called like a bar counter, I think. Again, that's a really cool use of a, of a background image that's already naturally kind of faded out, it looks like. The button, and then there's the form at the bottom. Uh, Lynn had a question, what are the title sections you should have on a site? Pretty much exactly what I've got up here. Uh, you know, welcome or home, about, about us, services, gallery, FAQs is one of them. I think there was actually an FAQs layout in this pack that we could have loaded. It's really up to you. Um, you know, it's depending on the size and shape of the site. Another rule at rule of uh, six here. I kind of like this better than that layout that they had before with the three columns. That's a poor use of that with that image. They should flip that over so that she's on the left scene and looking at the quote. All right. Uh, yeah, a, a question to um, show the landing page versus the home page. Yeah, I will. Uh, so the gallery page, this one we actually loaded, this was in their opinion called the portfolio page. This is kind of cool. Nice. You know, that's a good way to display some stuff. Again, that we are seeing that same feature, that same block over and over. Uh, here's a, that's kind of a cool little rule of three. This is the blurb again, image title with copy and then a button down below, probably a blurb. Footer again, the blog page. So I mentioned before that um, I wasn't going to set the blog to be the post page. You don't actually need to do that. And now that I'm on this page, I'm not actually sure that this loaded the correct one. I'm going to turn this back on and um, let's go here. We'll add, I'm going to go back down to copywriter and I want that blog page to load on hit on this. So hopefully that just overhauled and brought the new, there we go. So this brought the new layout in. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to save this. And so now we've got this blog page. So when you're using Divi and if you use a specific, um, if you use a specific layout that has a blog module and that's what this is right here. I got a fire engine taken off across the street. So hopefully that's not too loud. It might get louder, sorry. The blog module, I'm just gonna ignore the fire truck. The blog module uh, has these options. You can pick to show certain types of content uh, projects is one thing I wanted to briefly mention. Projects is a post type that gets created with Divi. So on the admin side, there's a new thing now that's called projects. And in a minute, when I show you um, our website, Big Boom Design, we use the projects post type for all of our clients. And to answer uh, Sherry's question from before, you know, she wanted to create a template to use on all the sub pages. That's what we've done where we created a really cool, I think it's cool, layout for all the different client pages that we're getting ready to uh, to roll out. So you pick the post type, how many posts to show. You can filter it down based on the category. You can show, this is just the date format, whether you know month or year comes first. Uh, show the excerpt or not. Let me move this to the side. Show content or show excerpt. That's going to show more or less of that. In this case, I think there's either no excerpt or the excerpt is the exact same thing as the content. But you can say, just don't show any of that. And then it's, well, I'm not sure why that happened. Let's see if that changes it. Nope, we won't get too bogged down there. Uh, and then elements, again, we are gonna have in this case with the blog settings, we're gonna have things like show the featured image or not, show the author. So right now it says Divi right there. We can turn off the author. We can turn off the date. If you're not very active on your blog, as we are not, just don't show the date and it, and it always looks like it's up to date. Um, and yeah, and so we can just leave that there. There's only one because there's only one blog post. Uh, if we were to add another blog post, we come up here and say new blog post. Oh, and I'm glad I clicked that because here's what we get is this uh, pop up like, hey, we made changes. Are you sure you want to leave? Uh, and I'm going to click save and exit. And so it just saved those little changes that I made. 
it jumped me over here, new post, publish it, publish it. I'm going to go now. I'm just going to go back to my home page. Told you this wasn't going to be linear. Back to the blog page. And now we have hello world in the center and then our, our most recent post that we just made in there. And so if we had nine, they would all show up here in this big grid. And uh, yeah, and so then like contact page and then there's our next contact page. Um, one thing I want to mention while we're on this page specifically, you know, the, Divi has a lot of stuff. And if you've used another theme or if you've been on WordPress for a while, you might be like, well, man, this, Divi just does it all. And why do I need any plugins? There are, there's definitely a, a line where certain types of functionality should be handled by a plugin, whereas certain types of design and functionality sh should or could be handled inside of Divi. In my opinion, even though there's a contact form as a module in Divi, and I'll turn it on and we'll look at it, don't use it. It doesn't keep a local copy of the submission. It's a huge deal if you realize that you've gone live with your website with a contact form and something's not dialed in correctly and you have, you have missed some number of contact submissions. Maybe nobody filled it out, but maybe a lot of people filled it out. And that doubt is not a comfortable thing to deal with, especially if you're being paid to do this. <laughs> so um, I would not use the built-in forms. Use either Ninja Forms, the plugin, or Gravity Forms, and build a form uh, and and just and just put it in a module. And you can do that. If we go inside of this, you can see there's a contact form module. Here's the fields. We could, you know, clone a field. We can change the name of that field. You know, we can save that. Um, and then down here below, if you completely ignore what I just said, you can come in here and put in the email address that it should go to, the pattern of what the ordering of these fields should be, what happens when they get, once they fill out the form, they should always get redirected. And typically you should send them to a thank you page. That's so that you can monitor inside of Google Analytics and know how many people landed on your thank you page. Uh, that's just a little trick there. And then there's spam protection to do things like a CAPTCHA. Um, but again, I don't want to dig too deep in this because you probably shouldn't use the built-in contact form inside of Divi. That's one of the few modules that I'll say that about. Uh, most of them are pretty solid, but I don't, I'm not a fan of the contact forms. We, we just see lots of issues depending on the server that the sites are on. Uh, so while I'm jumping away from this, I'm gonna go back and show the landing page versus the home page, and then I'm gonna answer uh, Linda's question here. So right now we've got this showing as, this is the landing, Sorry, yeah, this is the true like landing page, even though again, we've got these reversed. So this has this top section. This is the one that we worked with. And we'll kind of roll through and look at all these different sections here. There's back onto the homepage. Remember that we had that uh, little module there. Notice how I changed the settings on the blog page, but not inside the module here. And that's because they're not global items that are locked together. All right, and then if I go back to the top and do a landing page, this is what the theme developer, the layout developer called the home page. And it's basically just, it's very similar to landing page. It's just a little bit less stuff, right? One thing I do want to do, let me go back to uh, that welcome section. Um, and so the question from Linda, while I go ahead and do this next step, can you use WordPress, can you use Divi without WordPress? No, you can't. Um, even though we haven't really like looked at all at the backside of WordPress today, for the most part, we've done close to nothing over there. Uh, all WordPress sites must have a theme, a boring theme, a fancy theme, a, a free theme, a purchase theme. Uh, all WordPress sites have a theme. If you use Divi, that's, that's your option, but you can't, 
um, you can't have one without the other. You can't have Divi without using WordPress. The, the exception to this or the caveat here is that if you have a WordPress site and you have a theme and it is not Divi and you really like all the stuff that I'm showing you here, but you don't want to change your theme, Elegant Themes actually makes a plugin called the Divi Builder plugin. With that same membership with them, you can get the, the plugin, add it to any website that has any theme, and you can actually have all the Divi capabilities without using the Divi theme. That's a big deal if you've spent a lot of time or effort or money building out a theme a certain way. A uh, question from Juliet, confusion about the difference between landing and welcome. Really the only difference there is landing pages have, are gonna have like more of a sampler of all of the different sections and rows and modules that you might see throughout the entire layout pack. As far as you deciding to use one or the other, that's kind of personal preference, whether or not you like a really long homepage like this, or whether you want something a lot more condensed and tighter. Uh, and that's totally just up to you. One thing that I wanna do at this point is and I hope I do this correctly, because every time I do this, I do it wrong or right. So we'll see. Um, I just clicked on the section settings. And I'm going to come over to the advanced tab for the first time. And I'm going to go to this first one, which is CSS ID and classes. And I'm going to type in the word form. And I'm going to type this into both of them because I never remember which one it needs to go in. I think it's the class, but either way, this will work. I typed in the word form. I'm going to save the page. I'm going to exit the builder. And I'm going to click on the button. And that's the other half of our anchor. At the very beginning or early on, I put the link here and you can see it. I'll leave my cursor hovered over that for the moment. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, you see welcome slash pound sign or number sign and then the word form. Uh, that is how you call upon an anchor point is you pound sign and then the name and then you have to set your anchor point, which I went into, uh, I'll do it again. I went into the settings on the section, but you can set it on any point. You can set, set it on the, uh, the module or the row or the section. And so in this case, I went to the section settings, the advanced tab, <laughs> CSS ID and classes, and then put form in there. Um, uh, so to, to follow up a little bit more on the, the landing page, home page confusion, use one or the other. Don't, don't use both. Um, I only have both in the menu right now to kind of show the, those two options, uh, but use one or the other. And really it's just, do you want like a nice trim, clean, condensed homepage? Or do you want like, do you have that much stuff to put onto uh, a bigger page? That's one thing that you should always kind of ask yourself is like, do I have enough stuff to fill out this layout? And that's the other thing is like, if you don't want a homepage, like let's say you like everything about this, but you just don't, you're not gonna have a blog, just delete the section. If you, you know, don't need all three of these stripes, just delete it. That's gonna leave us with that weird line there because we just deleted something that had that, uh, that cut line in it. But so now I could maybe say, okay, let me, you know, let's delete that row, but I wanna keep that. And so, you know, we lost that little corner slice that we had there. Uh, so a question from Ms. Sherry, wouldn't you use a landing page with an, with an ad campaign? Um, you can, yeah, but technically these days, like the term landing page has been so overused. Um, hang on, let me kill, let me turn Slack off here. The term landing page has been so overused that every page or post or event or product or any piece of content can and should be a landing page. All your pages are kind of standalone and stand for themselves. Uh, so yeah, you can, you can use the traditional landing page as it's called in the layout pack and, des and decide to use that. That's totally fine to do. All right, so um, at this point, let me double check my list here. And I wanna, at this point, let me do, let me do a couple things. I wanna hit on, we've got 
just under 30 minutes left. I want to jump to the admin side of WordPress. What's an interesting thing about this Divi class is that, you know, we've spent so little time on this screen over the past hour and a half. And if you've taken a WordPress class, either for blogging or for website building for me, we spend almost the entire time on this screen. And Divi is very different. It's the front end builder. And so therefore we've spent a lot of this time on the front end. Uh, but if I call it, I'm gonna call out a couple things. One of them here is this projects. I mentioned the projects post type gets, gets added when you use Divi. There are some modules or there's a module uh, for projects and it's a way for you to, to display posts that get put into the project section. Posts up here and projects down here are completely identical. It's just another, it's just a clone version. But there are some Divi modules that tap into whatever content you might put inside of projects. And I'll show you a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, the other thing that I need to definitely hit on here is the difference between the theme options, theme builder, and theme customizer. And so at this point, I wanna open up those three things. I'll also open up, I'll just open up all of these actually. <laughs> uh, so I'm getting ready to roll through these other tabs. This is something that you might wanna write, write a note down about. Um, and I'll do my best to keep this concise and, and, and focused. Um, so, the, the Divi theme options has settings that, that apply to the entire website. All the pages, all the posts, all the events, all the products, um, all that kind of stuff. And, and so this general tab, for instance, here's somebody asked earlier, like where does the logo get added? Well, it gets added right here. So I could go here and I could upload a logo and let's put in, um, let's grab one of these logos and set it as the logo. And that's just gonna plug in that location. And now if I were to save this page, which I can click save right there, I'll go on another tab and go look at the front of the site. And you'll see it just, it just put that logo in place of where the Divi one was. Um, there's some settings, there's a lot of settings back in here that we don't have a lot of time to dig through. That's okay. The, the, the power of Divi is the stuff that I showed you and what, and what I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but this is important that I need to at least mention. And so uh, fixed navigation bar, what that is, notice that as I scroll that, that bar, that navigation bar stays pinned at the top. That's what that fixed navigation is. Uh, you can turn on or off the Divi gallery. This is something that I would encourage you to do. You can go in and when you start building your site, um, if you have some like brand colors, you can go in here and you can pick and change that to Hang on, let me, uh, yeah, okay. Um, you can change these to match your brand colors specifically. So you might wanna do that early on so that every time you go in to like set a color on a certain section or a piece of text, it's already gonna have your like two, three, four or five brand colors. Um, we did that over on the Franny's Farm site, which we'll look at in a minute. We went through and we set their like three or four brand colors and it makes it super quick and easy for like their marketing department, for instance, to pick out the green color that they use in their logo and not have multiple shades of green showing up all over the place. We can turn on and turn off some other things. I don't really want to dig too deep into the majority of these. One thing is that if you put in a map, there's a map module, you do, you will need to go and get a Google API key generated. Um, you can follow this little question mark and they'll send you the right spot. That's uh, so that Google can charge you for sending people to your map or using their map data. Here we can turn on and off social icons. There's a spot where we can, uh, you know, plug in different URLs for our different social media icons. You can turn those on or off. Those I think show up typically down at the bottom. Yeah, those show up down here in the, in the footer. So you can use those or not use those. A lot of this other stuff is really boring and you'll probably never need it. There's a back to top button if you turn that one on. Uh, that gives you a little uh, button that should show up over on the right hand side right there. Back to top. It's subtle, but it, uh, it helps. As soon as you scroll past a certain spot, it'll show up. All right, and then the only other things that I want to show on the theme, uh, theme options section, really there's not a whole lot. We looked at that update screen. That's where your API goes in. 
there's a lot of these things that like you shouldn't use Divi for SEO. Use Yoast. It's a plugin. It's great. It's popular. Uh, Divi is trying to do a lot of stuff and it does a lot really well, but there's a lot of things that it kind of oversteps its bounds and boundaries in, in my opinion. Um, yeah, really, there's not a whole lot else that I want to talk about within the theme options. Really, the main section is this is where you, this is where you set your logo. That's like the primary thing. And then this is where you set your Google Maps API key and set your brand colors. Past that, you'll probably never, um, you'll never be in here. Uh, the theme builder. I want to jump to a couple other sites now to look at this. So I'm going to jump over to actually our live website. So this is the Big Boom Design site. Uh, we've got a new section that we're working on and it is specific projects and this is the test layout and we're, we're testing it out with this MB Haynes layout. So the, um, the theme builder, what it lets you do is it'll let you create a template and this addresses a question from earlier where um, let's say you have one type of content like let's say products or projects or you know like we've got staff and testimonials and we've got you know, classes and tutorials. In this case, we've created a, a specific page and we didn't save this as a global item. We made a page, we pulled in some specific graphics and then we saved it as a, um, we saved it as a theme builder. Okay, and so now what happens is we've got this standardized thing. So it's gonna pull in the post title We've got a kind of a predetermined area for descriptions and goals, uh, introdu introducing the client, the results that happened, some highlights from it. And then we could then, you know, pull in the footer and do things like that. And so we've created this layout that matches our branding. And now notice down here, um, you know, it's for specific pages. So if I click on the settings, you'll see that you can really dial this in you can say, um, you know, I want this layout to show up on all pages or all blog posts, or you can come down here and then it just gets, this gets really, really deep. Like every, um, you know, every page that is in the category of plugins, like that's pretty specific, but, and then you can even dial it into a category inside. But so if I scroll all the way down, we are using the projects post type, which is right there. We are putting each of our clients in there as a project. And then we've created a very specific layout, the one that we just looked at, to go after that particular project. So we can go through and we can turn it on or turn it off for certain ones. Or we can say all the projects need to get this particular layout. And then when I go make a new project, it's automatically going to load those colors and backgrounds and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do a similar thing. If I jump over to the Franny's Farm website, you can see we, we've built out quite a few things. We did a search results custom uh, builder. We've got for the blog posts, we've got the checkout process. Uh, we've got the category pages. And then here we've got one that covers all of the, all of the products. And so if I go in here and I edit this one, this is where we've designed a specific like product page with title, content. Um, it's dynamically trying to pull in, you know, images. It's going to pull in, there's the price, the color, we've got these same options, you know, so all of this stuff basically shows up on every single product and it's a way to make it way more streamlined and keep the continuity of all the products really, really dialed in and locked together. And the other cool thing is that if, if they decide that they, you know, want to add another feature or if they want, you know, less rounded buttons, we can go in and we can make one change in one spot and we can now all of a sudden completely manipulate, uh, for instance, the buttons and we could come in here and we could change the color or we could change the radius on that button. So instead of it, you know, being 50, we could pull this way back down and now we get a slightly less rounded button right there. And that's once, as soon as we click save, that's going to trickle through and affect every single product, no matter how many they have, because they all rely on this one template. Uh, we've also got like a review section down here and related products. So this is cool. It's a dynamic piece where uh, related products is a module if you're building an e-commerce uh, e site and you just put this one module and you put it in your template and then regardless of what product is, is being called upon, it's always going to look at the related products and pull those in. 
Yeah, and so um, the question here or the comment here is, so in theory, you could use the same thing. You could do the same thing with services or products. Exactly. Um, it's, it's that exact scenario. If you want to create a bucket of content or a post site that's all around one, you know, genre or one feature, uh, yeah, make it, make it as a, a theme builder. And this is new within the past like year within Divi. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, I wish I could show even more there, but there's, we don't have time. Um, and then the last thing in here that I want to talk about is the customizer. And so the customizer is, the customizer is here, even if you're not using Divi. Uh, it's, it's the way that you customize a particular theme. But with inside of Divi, if you, if you are using Divi, there's obviously all these options over here on the left are specific to Divi. Uh, so, if, and, and this gets deep. If you've used the customizer on a non Divi theme, there aren't nearly as many levels. But if I click on like general settings, now I've got four more options. Site identity. Well, right here I could change the title, which would show up if I weren't using a logo, and then the tagline. I can pull in a site icon, which is like a little favicon or favicon, which is that little piece of paper right now. Layout settings. Here I can uh, kind of define the width, or I can set parameters on how wide the site gets. I can pick an accent color site wide. So right now we've got it as uh, that, you know, that blue, and I can come in here and say, no, I want that to be like a red. Uh, I can jump back over and this section is going to let me deal with fonts. So I can go through and I can change fonts site wide. Uh, that's for the header font. That's for the body font. We can set colors. So rather than manipulating the text on a module by module basis, <clears throat> specifically the color, the size, things like that, do that in this customizer. Because by doing it here, it's going to ripple through all of the different pages, all the different layouts, and it's going to keep everything looking really clean. And so spend some time kind of browsing through and, and just looking at the levels before you really go in and make too many changes. Heading and navigation, heading format, we've got, um, you know, we can hide the nav until you start to scroll. That's kind of a cool, sexy way to load a home page. It's, it's frustrating as well for some people that never scroll and they're like, where's the menu? We can change the style. This is gonna let us do like a centered up. This is gonna let us do a inline. Slide in is kind of cool. Actually that try on website that I mentioned earlier, we're using this slide in menu for them. And we've got a full screen which takes over everything. I don't think we've ever used that. <clears throat> we'll go back to default there. Primary menu bar. Um, this is the primary menu bar up top. And again, we've got make it full width if you want to push things all the way to the perimeter. You can hide the logo for some weird reason. You can mess with that bar height. You can set your max size. Everybody always wants their logo way bigger than it should be, but you can do that there. Uh, spacing colors again getting back down into like background colors drop down colors so there's that red accent that we set the background of this right here that would be drop down menu back background color um, you know that's going to be that right there a lot of levels here all right i'm going to i'll publish this and we'll go back secondary menu bar the secondary menu bar is, we're not actually using it right now, but it would show up at the very, very top. If I actually go jump over to our website, you can, you can see it at least. It's going to load at the very, very top, and it's that, um, it's this where the phone number and email and everything exists. And that's the secondary menu bar. Uh, fix nav, that's if you are using this fixed setup up top. And then header elements, this is where you can turn on or turn off. Um, you can turn on or turn off. I thought that was gonna actually make that show up, but apparently it's not. Let's see if that'll do it. Nope. Uh, full name of the try on site is, let me see here. It's a Remax try on advantage. And it should be this one. I'll paste this uh, link into the, I, I keep referencing this one. It, the site's about a year old or so, but it actually, um, maybe a little bit more, but um, 
it's got the video. It's got some cool features. It's got the video. It's got the pop-in menu. I'll paste the link in the chat here. All right, and then header elements. Yeah, we looked at that one. Um, I don't necessarily want to dig too deep into too many of these. Footer, it does have footer elements. Again, the footer, let me go to the very bottom. It's talking about this area down in here. Typically, we'll just get rid of this kind of built-in footer and we'll just create a nice looking clean footer that becomes a global item. And so again, you can make a section, a global item, it locks them all together. And, um, and that way you can update one spot and it just ripples through everything, which is kind of cool. All right, um, let me reference my little handy punch list here. Uh, the, I'll, sh I'll talk about this one, but we've never really dealt much with it personally. Uh, the role editor, you can really fine tune all the different roles. So if you have somebody that works for you and you just want them uh, to have certain capabilities, like they can't get into the theme builder um, or they might not be able to like work with global items, you can disable certain features for certain users. And then the Divi library, we talked about it. We added some stuff to it. Um, but here you can see there's that item that we created that full bleed. It is a global item. We've got that little icon as well. Um, I can show you this over on ours and how uh, large this library can get. And so if I do the Divi library on our live website, you can see just in a second, you know, we've got a lot of different sections that we've loaded. We've got um, different blurbs. We've got, you know, our, our support plan section that we can load on different things, all kinds of stuff there. And last thing I'll mention here is at the very bottom, this support center. Um, earlier to today, I wanted to catch up on some of the new features that had been added, just so I made sure I walked through a few of these things correctly. Uh, and so I actually went in and, and dug through a few of these things and watched these little videos. They're really nice. They're built right into WordPress. If you've got, um, you know, if you're using Divi and it's loaded, then you're going to have access to this built right into it. But also there's a massive knowledge base if you go to the Elegant Themes website. So that's where you can post questions and create a ticket and all that kind of stuff that'll be tied back to you. Whereas this is just kind of built in uh, internal help uh, that that is some, it's sometimes very generic, but also if you missed anything from today that I went through, you could probably find, you know, probably go through like these three and it'll cover a lot of the things that I have talked about. Uh, so with about seven minutes left, I want to, I covered almost everything on here. There's one last thing that I wanted to show. Let me just pick, uh, let's get to, let's get to the, uh, the landing page, which is called welcome. Uh, there's that top bar that is so hideous now. <laughs> so I'm going to turn on the visual builder. And this last thing that I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to uh, answer any final questions. Uh, this is something that's kind of cool. So if you want to play around with a section, so let's say I want to clone this whole top section. I'll click the clone button. I should now have both, right? I got top and bottom. There's two of them. They're identical. And then if I want to, what I can do, so let's, let's say I want to play around with this and just make some changes to it, but I don't want to lose the one that I had. Maybe I even want to make a change to it, make it live and get feedback from clients or friends or somebody like that. I can come in here and I can, let's say, go in and say, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about changing this homepage background image to something that's more uh, like this. And if, let's say now you want to go in and hide this. You don't want to delete it completely. You just want to temporarily hide it. You can click on the section settings. You can go to the advanced tab, go to the visibility tab and check these three options. And notice when I do that, it, it, um, it makes it all gray. And I have just now disabled, disabled it on all three devices and I can save this. And it's a way for me to now save the page make sure that finishes there. I can exit the builder. And now I've got my new header section and notice I don't have that area down below. 
it's still there. If I turn the visual builder back on, it's still going to show up and I can still bring it back to life or I could switch the two. Um, so it's right there, but it's a way to kind of temporarily hide it just so that you're not having to um, delete it and try to recreate it. Now, another option is you can always just save it to the library and add it back in. Um, but it's a really nice, quick and easy way to, to deal with um, kind of creating uh, a redundant version that you might want to play around with. Likewise, the other thing is um, sometimes if you have an item on your website that's really heavy for uh, load time, like a big gallery or a video, you know, you can go in and, and instead of saying, I want to um, hide it, let's try to get back into that section settings. I'm not sure why it's not letting me get to that. That's okay, I can do it up here. I can go in and do advanced visibility and I could say, you know what, just turn this off on phones and tablets. And that's kind of a cool way where you can create one item, design it a certain way, clone it, and then turn it off for phone and tablet and turn it off on the other one, you would turn it off on desktop. So then you've got two items, one that's gonna load for phone and tablet, and then the other one that's gonna load for desktop. And so you can kind of customize the experience based on who's coming to your site and what you want them to see. All right, so with that, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna pause. Uh, let me read through a couple of these questions. If you have a question, go ahead and throw it in there. Uh, so Linda asked a question about forms. Uh, the one that I would recommend is one called Gravity Forms. And then there's another one called Ninja Forms. And so Gravity Forms is this one and Ninja Forms is this one. I'll post these links. Gravity Forms, I don't think there's a free version, uh, but it can do anything that you can imagine with forms. They might have a free version. Uh, Ninja Forms I know is free. And then I think there's a paid version of it that does more. Uh, let's see here. So once you get a site built, what you like on a test location, do you simply export it and then move the files to their permanent location? Would you need to install a new version of WordPress first? Okay, so the question from Sherry essentially is, you've got your site built, you wanna go live with it, you're happy, how do you get it to your live website? So the, it depends on your scenario. If you already have a WordPress website set up and you're building this somewhere else, like on another server, you need to then, yes, you need to either back up the entire website and move it over and drop it on top of your live website, or you can export all the little pieces and parts through Divi through this uh, kind of portability thing right here. And you can export a particular uh, uh, layout. Now this is just gonna export things like the Divi builder layouts and stuff like that. Um, there is the ability over on the admin side, you can go through and you can export anything. So you can go into theme options and you can come up to the top right and you can export all your theme options uh, with the theme builder. Same thing, you can export all of the different layouts. With the customizer, I think you can do the same. It might be in a different spot. Um, I'm not sure where it is on the customizer. And same thing with all of these, definitely with the library. And actually when we uh, built the Franny's Farm website, we did that exact thing because they have a super active WooCommerce, uh, e-commerce website that has orders constantly happening. And so we couldn't just make a clone, spend a month and rebuild it, and then just drop it back on top of their live website because there had been a lot of orders. So I picked a time uh, where I took their website down for about an hour, their live website, and I just put it in maintenance mode. And I exported everything before I did that. And then I imported everything over and then took it out of maintenance mode. Uh, and it worked better than I thought that it would um, for such a massive complex site. Uh, their site has a very active, lots of very active stuff and lots of layouts and it was a complex situation. But um, having these options, these export options made that really, really easy or easier than it used to be. All right, it is right at five o'clock. Um, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and awkwardly start to close this thing down. Uh, question from Linda, can you move from WordPress to, WordPress to Wix? You can go to and from any platform to any platform. Uh, it is not automatic and it is a very manual process. You can be on Wix or Squarespace or Weebly and you can set up a WordPress site, but you have to basically copy paste, recreate, build it back out. It is a manual process. The one exception to that is that if you are on wordpress.com, you can export your content and you can go over to wordpress.org. 
Uh, if that doesn't make any sense, come and take a WordPress class for me and I'll explain that specifically, the difference between .com and .org. Uh, but everything else is just a manual breakdown and, and migration. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this wasn't too overwhelming. Hopefully that was uh, entertaining at times. Uh, I will, I think automatically everybody's going to get an email with the recording for this. If you have follow up questions about what we covered or about just WordPress stuff in general, reach out to me. Um, glad it made sense. Feel free to throw me a Google review if you want to do that. Shameless solicitation there. Um, yeah, thanks everybody. I'm, oh, I'm teaching a class next week. It is a, um, a WordPress class on Thursday and it is specifically about WooCommerce and e-commerce. WooCommerce is the plugin that gives you e-commerce capabilities and we will be doing a two hour deep dive into how to build a store on WordPress using WooCommerce and uh, we'll cover like drop ship and shipping and payment and all that fun stuff. Uh, and yes, Sherry, I will email you uh, yeah, the zip file. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to awkwardly stop sharing my screen and shutting this stuff down here.